Welcome to TW Controls, where we help you become a better technician. And today I have with me Amber Wilborn and Mary Bruce. How are you today? We are. <laughs> We're doing great. We're doing great. We're doing great. We're doing great. Okay. We're doing great. You, I see you have you have brought some guests along. Uh huh. Yeah. I have. Now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Would you like to introduce them? This is Princess Layla, not Layla. <laughs> do this <laughs> oh amber says my hair is messed up hold on everybody got to fix my hair this is a very top top there you go oh yeah. man let's see i mean what would i do without just <laughs> an awesome support team just to keep me going in the right direction so this is princess Leia, not layla like eric clapton song like i was singing earlier now why why do you have them in front of you well tim today is may 4th may the 4th be with you. Oh, and Dave Griffith, where are the Star Trek masks? Well, I mean, does Star Trek have its own day? I mean, it's that, not really like. It's definitely not May the 4th. To, not to, um, but is there yeah. a Trekkie day? I would, could not imagine there being a May the 4th be with you and there not being a Trekkie day. <laughs> Dave, find that out for us. Yeah, if you could find that out and just drop it down in the chat for us. Uh, who do you got on the night? Cause yeah, you got a live stream tonight, oh, don't does. you? Yeah. So this is Chewy. Funny story. I used to have a Shih Tzu. Can't you can't use that type of language <laughs> on the live stream? <laughs> Twenty years ago, and his name was Chewy because I love Star Wars so much. And this is CP3O. And this is um, Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. I don't think I uh, didn't. They don't ever have names. I hope. And then this is the, a very bad man that actually ended up turning good. And then this is R2-D2. Yoda. Yoda. Lord. Yoda. Mandalorian. Yes. Baby Groot's the bomb. Hey, Laylit. How are you doing today? And hey, Marcio. Star Trek Day is September 8th. Okay, nice. if y'all can put that on the calendar, yep. we'll make sure that we I'll do a Star Trek theme one for um, September 8th. But okay, today we're going... <laughs> today we're going to be talking about how to configure your Ethernet to get connected to your PLC. Now, I want to go ahead and note to you, this is not a networking live stream. This is a live stream on how to connect to your PLC. And so we are going to mainly be in, actually I'm gonna use um, Factory Talk Link's network browser. Now I'm using this and this is by Rockwell Automation, but we can see here that we have a PLC Next um, from Phoenix Contact in here. We have a Yamaha, we have um, ODOT Ethernet adapter, but mainly we can use this to really quickly see whether we can talk to, 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 to devices or not. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take and wipe out my IP configuration so it's just like yours would be if you were going and grabbing a new computer. Take it away, Amber. So Dave's um, actually, they're talking about reshoring with Harry Moser, founder and, of Reshoring Initiative. Oh. And it's going to be at a special time. Yeah. It's gonna be at 12. Oh my gosh. Noon. 12 noon. Oh, well, we can just, man, you know, Dave, and we all need to talk. Not that we can do it now, but there's a new feature that YouTube just came out with that you can roll one live stream right to the next. Ooh. So if you have people lined up, you can just pass your audience off to them. So we ought to figure out how we can go from 11 to 12 to 1 to 2 and just... Live stream all day? Yeah, have an all-day live stream. But okay, so I have got mine set up now. I just got to remember which computer to grab. There you go. Yeah, and so now... If we're looking at Ethernet here, we see we have no devices. And the first thing you got to figure out that can be the most difficult thing is what is your IP address that you're trying to connect to? And so there are a couple of guesses. And if you use any general household network stuff, it's usually going to be 192.168.0. So let's start there and talk about what is going to happen. So I'm going to go and right click my network here in the bottom right and go to open network and internet settings. Now if you don't see that you can also go to the start menu and just start typing control panel and bring up the control panel and then network and internet. So this gets us here from right clicking down here we're just going to go to ethernet and change adapter options. Now 
If you have any modern PC, then you're actually going to have multiple network adapters here, which that could be the first issue is which one are you actually using? Now, I have only one on here because we're running a virtual box here, but I'm actually going to pop out of this virtual box and I'm going to go into this PC's network just so we could see that typically you're going to have a lot of variety here. So if I got to change adapter here, then I have a Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection. I have an Ethernet connection. I have another one named Ethernet. This one's five. This one's eight. This one's a virtual box. And then we have Wi-Fi. It's like, okay, which one sh is, should you be using? Well, a quick, easy way is unplug the, the Ethernet cable from your PC and see which one drops out. Oh. And so in that case, we know that Ethernet 5 is the one that we would be using. That's helpful. It is helpful. Thank you, Amber. You're welcome, Tom. <laughs> So I'm going to go back into our host operating system, though. And just a note, this live stream is being recorded, so you don't have to take notes, and you can refer back to this later, and you can pause, because Tim goes through things very fast, <laughs> which is okay, because it's recorded, and you I can think, go back and play it. I think Amber is saying that I need to slow down. Are you trying to insinuate something? No. <laughs> <laughs> but she is right. And if you're watching this after the live stream, if you look down, you'll notice that it has chapters on it. And I will have it categorized per what part of Ethernet that we're going through. So convenient. So convenient. Good point, Tim. So glad you pointed that out. <laughs> but I'm going to go into Ethernet, and then we're going to go to Properties. And depending on your Windows version, you're going to see something that either says TCP IP or TCP IP v4 or IPv4, but we're looking for this one right here. Now there is one on some of them that is a version 6. You can see TCP IP version 6 here. For the, for the most part, our industry has not adopted it yet. So we're going to go into here, and this is what it typically is going to look like. So we have obtain here and obtain here, and what that allows us to do is to plug into your typical office network, and it's going to do everything for us. But if you're plugging into a PLC, then there's not going to be anything to tell it any of this stuff. So wildly, what people will do is they're going to guess. So I'm just going to put in 192.168.0.109. That's a wild guess. Well, okay. <laughs> Wildly, I went with it, okay? All right, so it's not a completely wild guess, though, because I said most, if you buy a household internet router or anything, a printer, chances are it's going to default to 192.168.0. And ever as we're getting ready to learn, Tim's networking rules say if the first three octets or those groups of numbers match and the last one's unique, then we might be able to connect. You're such a teacher's pet. <laughs> you put up three fingers before he even said it. God, I don't know. Now we also have a subnet here. We're gonna talk about it in a little bit, but mainly if you will just click off of this IP, it's gonna magically fill in what it thinks is the right subnet. Tell your mother good morning. Oh, hey mom, how you doing? Mom had a birthday last week and- Yep, happy yes, birthday! Happy birthday! And, and it's up to you because I won't announce it because I don't know how you are about it, but yeah, how old are you? Tom, she, she's 50. Um, I don't think so, because, yeah, I, I'm taking up kind of close to that number. <laughs> now you're telling your real age. <laughs> yeah, but now if we go to Factory Talk Leagues, we're not going to see our PLC, and that's what people do, is they get to this point, and they're just like, I don't know what to do. The biggest thing I can tell you is if you are looking at Factory Talk Leagues network browser or whatever software's browser, and you don't see your PLC, is don't go any further because you're not going to get anywhere. And that's for people, they're, you know, they're like, well, I tried going online. I've tried different Ethernet drivers. I've tried this. I've tried that. And I'm like, okay, but did you actually see the PLC? Well, no. Here's where we're going to have to back up and we're going to have to figure out, all right, where's our problem? And the big thing we're going to use to help us figure out that is the command prompt. Now, I know that sounds ancient, but we're going to go to the start menu and type command Ooh. prompt. So easy. Yes, it is so easy, Amber. And this brings up an old DOS screen, and we're gonna type what we think the IP address is. But the issue right now is we don't know what the IP address is. Now, just to help us out, some devices are gonna have a display on them. So like I have this ODOT device here, and if I look at this display, I can see that it's 192.168.1.9. So let's go ahead and try to ping that. 
So I'm going to type P I N G. Oh, like he said, P. <laughs> oh, so many anagrams. I thought it was like Oh, Hi, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Jeff. But Good okay, morning. so we see here we got a general failure. Now, again, this is not a networking class, so we're not even worried about that. What well, we got, general failure or what, as much as we did not get a reply from the device that we were trying to ping. So the next command that we're going to enter is going to be ipconfig. And these are the only two commands that you actually need to know in the command prompt is this P-I-N-G space the IP address and this IP config. So IP config is gonna tell us what's the IP address of our PC. And again, this is not a networking class, but Tim's networking rules say that the first three octets, which in this case, the device we have is 192.168.1, have to match. And I have 192.168.0. So we're gonna go back into our ethernet configuration and we're gonna to go to properties and I'm gonna change that zero to a one. That way the first three match. I'm just gonna click okay out of that. And then you're gonna be tempted to jump right back over to factory talk links, but go ahead and ping again. And if you ping. don't know that, <laughs> and if you don't know, you can actually use your up arrows and go through your history of commands. I'm, I'm a terrible typer, so I'm just using my up arrow, find where I pinged it the last time, and I'm gonna hit enter, and this is what it should look like when it's good. So let me make this a little taller, that way we can see this. Mm. So here, <laughs> I hit a ping, and it says transmit failed, general failure. And again, I don't really care about any of this other information in here as much as I didn't get a reply. And down here I got a reply from, and mainly it's from the IP address that I tried to ping. So I did get replies. And now if we go over to factory talk links, then we can see our PLCs. All right, let's take a Lots break and look at the chat. And yeah, I, com I command So you. first, yeah, mom is 79. Amazing. That is amazing, yes. And, so I, I have to admit, I did not call and wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> I was a terrible son this weekend. I'm like, man. I it's okay, not Shirley. I'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Angel, very nice to have you on. And let's talk a little bit about more about this IP there. I thought you yeah. were going to say, let's talk about Jeff Kuiper for a minute. Jeff <laughs> Kuiper. Oh, I totally missed that. Jeff Kuiper. Can't believe you don't have anything to say about this yet. I, I'm surprised he hasn't pinged in. <laughs> <laughs> They're here all day. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but okay, there's a few major things, that, mistakes that people make that we do need to talk about. So first, you don't know what IP address you need. So you call and, okay, since I used the ODOT device earlier, that was 192.168.19. So you call somebody and they tell you, hey, that's the IP address. And so you go over here and you go to properties and you type 192.168.1 and then I'm gonna enter nine. And I click okay, okay. Now why did you close. enter nine? Well, Amber, if you wait a second, we will talk about that. So sorry, I'm <laughs> pinging over to the next issue. <laughs> Okay, now this is interesting because I actually made this device operates differently. We may have to use a different IP. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's exactly right because according to this, I can still talk to everybody. Oh, there we go. Nope, it just took it a second. So that now all of a sudden we see all our devices are gone and it has a crazy IP address. It says 169.254.89.50. Now, when I went over here and I entered my IP address, it looks absolutely nothing like that. I entered 192.168.1.9. And so now I'm left wondering, well, what is 169.254.89? All right, what's the commentary over there? Well, we're just looking, we're, we're very interested in what you're saying, and we're also looking at 
Your chat. Your chat. Oh, okay. Well, we got some Daryl Jordan. Hey, Daryl. Always good to have you on. I know you had some recent e um, Ethernet issues, yeah, and you had to um, get IT in there. So maybe the next time you won't have to. Because that's one thing, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, IT takes care of all our Ethernet needs. And okay, first, you are completely at the mercy of somebody who may not be there when your machine is down. Mm -hmm. And th that's our first issue. And second of all, at that point, if IT takes care of everything, can you actually change anything and fix it? This is something that you've got to be able to do. Which brings us to our, our Jeff Kuiper said that he's being good. So that's, that's, that's relevant to that. Is Can you fix your he's being good. situation without having to call an entire IT department? Well, and really, because, you know, and that's the thing. You know, if somebody gets a piece of equipment and it's a big piece of equipment, you know, they know to download everything, know to back up everything, all that works. You know, it's always a little accessory piece of equipment that nobody's even opened the cabinet on. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden they open it up and they're like, um... um yeah. yeah. Anybody know there's a PLC in this thing? <laughs> and so there you are at one in the morning trying to figure out how to connect. So those are the times that it really kind of gets you. But yeah, you know, and you know, interesting about the Factory Talk Lynx network browser looking better than RS Lynx. This is not a reskinned version of RS Lynx. Like, you know, Studio 5000 and RS Logix 5000 are the same thing. These are two separate softwares and they do operate differently. And there are some pitfalls that we probably should talk about probably in a different live stream. But okay, let me get back to this. So mainly, where were we even? We were gonna <laughs> talk about 169, 168. That's right, so right now I have an IP of 192, 168, 19. And I entered that because I called somebody in the middle of the night and asked them what the PLC IP address is and that's what they told me. And I wasn't thinking, and I just entered. Mary Bruce, what is wrong with my IP address? Teacher Pet. I think it's been reassigned something. <laughs> and what? Ha why does it get reassigned? Do you remember? What's yeah. those networking rules say? If you have the first three objects that are the same, mm -hmm. and the last one is unique, but that's if right. it's not unique, that's right. You'll get pre-populated. That's right. So when it's not unique, Windows is going to go me. and kick in what we call DHCP. So now I'm going to go back and do that same IP config command. And you see right here, we have this strange address. And people call me with this all the time. Hey, I go and I'm doing your steps and it says 169, 254. And then these second ones are gonna be something different. And like when I go to my ethernet configuration, I get a completely different IP address. And what that means is I've entered an IP address of a device out on the network. Now this could be of a printer, this could be of another PC, this could be, uh, in this case, I've done it over this O.io module, but somewhere I have written an IP address and Windows is like, no, nah, that one's already out there. Let me switch to DHCP and see if I can find an IP address. Now, I really don't like that they do this, but this is the way they do it now. Used to, it'd pop up on the screen and say, duplicate IP detected. And it would just sit there and wait for you to click OK. And now they do this and I get it, they're trying to make it where you can seamlessly get online, but I really would like to know that I have that duplicate IP. So let's check out the, t the chat. Okay. What you got there, Amber? Well, Daryl says, yep, doing one of the exercises, the TEM somehow made the IP address go away on the PLC. I had our computer tech restore the IP address. Saved p time by doing this. Still not sure how the address went away. What PLC was that? I'd be curious of that because the one that really sticks out to me that Again, I, you know, I definitely don't fully agree with how they do it, is the Micro 800. So if you create a new program in Connected Components Workbench and you forget to s assign an IP address, and actually this was true in RS Logix 500 and RS Logix 5, when you download that program, it defaults to DHCP and you'll lose that IP address. Do you have one of our IP explorers? Because you, you definitely should have one if you don't have one. Because sure. that would allow you to figure that out. But okay. What else we got there, Amber? That was it. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to have to change this to something unique. Now here's where, you know, this is a 50-50 whether this works or not. But if I change this back to 109 and I click OK, and I go back through here, if I go back and try to ping, oh, okay, this time it works. So about half the time when you have that duplicate IP, I've found that you have to go in 
and we actually have to select obtain IP address automatically again. But just so we can see what's going to happen when we do this without having um, a DHCP server, I'm going to go ahead and click that. We'll give it a minute to try to assign one. Can you not use the ping command to check the network to see if that IP address is used? Well, the issue with doing that is the first thing is you've got to know what IP address that you can be on that network. In other words, if I mean, I'll do that in just a second. So let's say that you're trying to figure out what IP address to assign so that, to your PC so that you can communicate with something. You're not going to be able to ping until you assign your PC an IP address. So you're kind of in a chicken and egg scenario. So let's see if we've had enough time. Thanks, Josh. That was a good question. That was That's an excellent question. question. Yep. So if I go to IP configure, all right, you see I've got a funny IP address now. But if I go and try to ping this, See, we're going to get a general failure. Now, there is something on that one, but okay, I know that there's nothing on 192.168.1.2. So, if I ping it, we're still going to get the same general failure. So, no, really, and here's why I stress to companies all the time, you've you got to have... Generally. Generally you failed. Generally failed. Sorry. <laughs> you've got to have an inventory of your IP addresses. Um, because, yeah, you can easily enter an IP address of some device on the network. And okay, it can be as innocent as the, in this case, it's gonna just um, go to revert to DHCP, but let's say that device was offline and then you enter an IP address. When it comes back online, it's gonna do the same check. Only, let's say it was the Compact Logix. So that moment that Compact Logix, which maybe has a bunch of drives and everything else that's communicating to over Ethernet, the moment it sees that it can't talk, it's going to take itself, or it sees a duplicate IP, it's going to take itself offline, and then your machine's going to be down. So, I mean, nah, the, the only way is to really have an inventory of your IP addresses. So, Jeff has pinged in. Do you recommend a network scanner to see what existing addresses are on the network? A software like Angry IP? I do not. I absolutely do not recommend Angry IP. And the issue of angry IP is... It's just so angry, gosh. Well, it can make a network angry. That's why they call it angry IP, is really it can flood a network with traffic. And there's a lot of things that can happen at that point. So first, flat out, you're flooding a network with traffic. It's, you're sitting there, and that's what it does. It sits there and just starts trying to pound every IP address out there. And so that can choke a network. Also, more modern and advanced routers can see that as an attack and shut it down or shut that whole port down and so at that point now not only can you not get online with your machine that port doesn't even work anymore and then you're going to, have to get IT involved and then they're going to hostile so no do you use that Jeff you better not you need an IP antihistamine IP antihistamine <laughs> <laughs> or what did they call angry uh, road rage yeah yeah so it's like road rage on an IP all right, so IP addresses, the first three have to match. The last one has to be unique. Just this, <coughs> oh my goodness, you knocked R2-D-O. The, the deuces of threes or something. <laughs> but now this is not a networking class, remember? This is just Tim's networking rules. But now let's talk about that subnet, because that's the next mistake I see people make. So if we go right back into here and go back to our network configuration, And I'm going to select use the following. And okay, now I know the guy told me, whoever on the phone or whatever, hey, your IP address needs to be 192, 168, 1, and 109 is what I'm going to use. And then you're not sure about this subnet, but you remember there's a bunch of 255. So I'm just going to enter 255 all the way across it. And we're going to click OK to all that. And then again, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to ping again. And we get ping. There's that general failure again. So again, this is not a networking class. But what I said was, what is it, Mary Bruce? Can you, I want to hear what you have to say. This, <laughs> and then we'll come back it's to an it. involuntary response. <laughs> yeah. But so the subnet is how big of a wall, how tall of a wall do you want to build and not have to talk to anybody else? So zero, we can talk to anybody. 255, we're not talking to anyone but ourselves. So 192, let me pop back up here so we can see these, whoops, wrong one. Nope, wrong one again. 
<laughs> yep, you know, one of these days you think we would get the hang of this, or I would get the hang of this. I shouldn't even use the we term there, but. <laughs> <laughs> you should use the term we, because we're in this together. But so I have 192 here, and I had a subnet of 255. That means I'm only talking to 192s. And then we have 168 and then 255. That means I'm only talking to 168s. And then I have a one with 255. And that means I'm only talking to ones. And finally, I, right now I have a 109 with a 255. That means I'm only going to talk to 109. And I'm trying to ping 9 here. So that's what this last zero means, is let everything through on this last one. So the moment I hit OK to that, uh-oh. Oh, there it goes. Took it a second. We're going to be able to talk again. So Jeff Kuiper says, yes, I do use network scanners. It would be awesome if we had a small handheld that shows the address that are used. Mm. Well, Jeff, <laughs> we do have a device. It is not a network scanner, though. And I assume you mean the PLC tool some IPE. So this, and this is the difference. I, I am not for angry IP or any of those things that choke networks, but the, the IP Explorer, it just listens really good. So it's going to listen and see what's going on out there. So if I was to plug this in, and let's see if I can get my autofocus working here, because I know it's not going to like it. And may the force be with you. Yeah. And if I can, oh, if I can get this in the right place, if I can figure out how to turn. Yeah, there I got it. Go. Okay. Almost there. Yep. Talk yep. me through it. There Read me go. on. Yep. yep. And then. Yep. If I could find the autofocus button. Yep. There, there we go. go. Don't move. Great. Don't move. You're moving. There you go. Okay, so now if we look at this, I can go to. Oh, you moved. I moved. There okay. we go. Let's see, this is why we don't do autofocus. As now I can go to read unknown. And yeah, I will try to get the focus a little better here because, yeah. I need to turn the autofocus back off. You just had a couple more people with you helping. I know. <laughs> I mean, just a few more <laughs> IT people to help you out with this. And, and yeah, okay, so, yeah, I am not prepared for this, Jeff. Man. I'm so close, though. They should just really buy the device. I mean, there we go. Oh, oh, I had it. Oh, oh. Okay, that's as close as it's going to get because, yeah, I don't have it on. But now, yeah, you're right. We can go through here and we can see all, oops, all the devices that are out on the network. And, yeah, I have videos on that. Yes. But, Jeff, that is not, a, um, that is not an actual IP scanner. That is an IP listener. So that, that is an important difference. So I would not be scared to plug this into a network. One, going back to, who was it, Josh? Josh yeah. asking about the command and um, the um, ping feature. Okay, so yeah, I guess we are going to go into this a little bit. Is I do not have to have an IP set up on this one. So if I select one of my other networks here, and we'll see how lucky I get with the autofocus. Oh yeah, we need we need our focus. But if you could actually read that, it says zero, 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 zero. So I have assigned no IP address to this, but it could still read what's out on the network. And so this will discover IPs without it being on there. Now I still, this is not even a substitute for knowing your IP addresses though, because what if something is just powered off at that point? So you still need a good inventory, but yeah, that'll probably get you there. All right. What else you got over there, Amber? I love the uh, read unknown feature. That's just me saying that. Jeff says that he likes the idea of listener instead of a scanner, and I agree, Jeff. Um, Coast or VP uh, suggests what I assume is another website, Simple IP Config, um, which is a uh, another way of with, without having to flip through windows. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I go through it this way here, but. Yeah, I have, you can also make shortcuts in the command, or through the command prompt, make batch files, and that's how we change them here. So, yeah, there's a lot of easier ways, but you know me, I usually do the way that is the most generic. Michael, very hey, glad you can make the live stream. What class are you in? Message retracted. Message retracted. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. I still, um, we still see you, man. Why didn't you say hi, Mom? <laughs> 
disrespect. And <laughs> Mother's Day is Sunday. Oh. It's okay. That's... I heard that he was pretty adamant about you specifically taking him to school the other day. <laughs> That's right. Not taking me. I love that. Different days for different parents, man. Mary, what troubles do you have going on Um, Sometimes I get a little bit nervous and confused about accidentally re-signing one by guessing the same IP address. Yeah. So I think I would have to go like a 1995 route and write mm-hmm. down the IP addresses that I'm that I'm trying. That. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michael's got to go. What, so you, you send a message, you retract a message, and you say you got to go. What, would you get in trouble? <laughs> Sorry, teacher. <laughs> I, I don't struggle with IP addresses a whole lot because I actually have access to a tool that, that helps a lot, which isn't isn't anything beyond just making it easy and as quick as possible to resolve. Yeah. What tool is that, Mary? <laughs> Tim's brain. <laughs> that also. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> no, I know. You you managed to do most of it on your own, but yes, if we want, if we're going to put a link to it, let me go ahead and put Oops, yeah, the wrong, wrong, wrong keyboard. Great. Amber, why wrong are you not keyboard. telling me I'm typing wrong on the wrong keyboard? keyboard? ltools.com and the device that we are talking about is this device right here. It's very helpful. Whoops, forgot to put the link. There we go. I'll so, also be yeah. confused if I've already assigned an IP address to something, so I have to go back in and check. <laughs> so that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, and it is helpful there. So yeah, this really it was a short live stream. That was the main thing of it. So do you have any particular questions out in the chat that you'd like to ask, even not an Ethernet related or anything Anything Ethernet related? Like how we work with (laughs) Tim every day. How do you work with Tim every day, Amber? I drink. (laughs) Water. Water. Coffee. Hydration is the key. I take an antihistamine. Yeah, so we don't choke our networks <laughs> <laughs> it's good it is good i mean how does timmy how timmy oh my gosh i've reverted back to high school how does tim work with high school you out? have never called me timmy probably I in never your call, life i've never called I, that's right other people did i never did Nobody i've always known you as tim school. when you choke a network it actually you get responses from other other devices right and so mm-hmm. when you hear other people call tim timmy you're like oh, oh you can get somewhere it. in the middle yeah the uh the thing that i often wonder is um if it's possible to i guess you can broadcast messages to multiple ip addresses at the same time you can, well, and those say, well, we can go into that a little bit. So now, well, network in class, though. Oh, well, no, right. but okay, Brian, Tilt you do need to understand enough about networking, all right, uh, mainly about why does this magically find all these devices? And that is the broadcast packets that you're talking about. So, the um, our PC has shouted out there, hey, is anybody out there? And these are the devices that responded on Ethernet IP. So what I can do is I'm going to go to configure drivers and we already have our ethernet driver here. I'm going to click on it and then discovery method. There is the broadcast you're talking about. But what I can also select here is device list range. And I'm going to click up just click OK to it. And it's going to warn me that, yeah, I'm getting ready to change some stuff. And when I go in here, you notice, yeah, everything's gone. Now still, if I go and I try to ping, that ODOT device, 192, oops, actually it's in my history because I'm a terrible typer. There it is right there. I can ping it perfectly, but it's not going to show up. And so that is this discovery method that we see in there. So broadcast depends on those packets being you know, shouting stuff everywhere. But so in this case, I'm allowed to hit add new and 192.168.1.9. And click OK. And now we see it. Now we only see that device because we don't, we're not dependent on that broadcast traffic now. So if you have the choice, go ahead and leave this on the broadcast method. Because that's going to let you see everything that's out there. So Jeff asked, when you walk into a plant and don't know the IP schemes, how do you get online with a PLC? Well, Jeff... One, I never leave home without a PLC tool sim IPE. 
But also, <laughs> you do get, you know, you, you'll have some clues. I mean, one... And I honestly, I until recently, I have never seen an IP address written on a PLC. Now we got a PLC in the other day and it had an IP address on it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I have never seen this before in my life. But so may, maybe it's written somewhere. Maybe it's written on some drawings. Also, maybe there's a PC that is just connected to the network. And then you can walk in there. It'll let you open up command prompt, hit IP config, and you'll know its IP address. Also... HMIs. Uh, you're not going to be able to see me do that, but if they have a go to config screen on them, you can go in and see their network configuration. Our goal there is just to get onto the general network. We want to know those first three octets. And after that, yeah, hopefully we can start using the broadcast discovery. Now, what gets really difficult is if you're at a plant that is using VLANs and all those new switches, and they're blocking all those packets. That's where it can get difficult. Good answer. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, one other thing while we're, because you know, one thing that's a little gray is a lot of you are more familiar with RS links. And since we brought up the discovery method, let's talk about what that actually means in RS links. Josh adds while we wait 150 years while RS Links opens. <laughs> that in my factory we have the IP address on the drawings if they're if they're ever updated. Well, you know, and that's the issue, Josh. You know, I, I know I know some plants. I mean, they spend a lot of time changing IP address schemes, and it's like, oh my goodness, guys. But okay, in this case, you have in in um. Let me just go in here. Configure drivers, and then under available driver types, we have two Ethernet drivers. We have Ethernet devices and Ethernet IP. Now I already have an Ethernet IP when configured right here, so if I close and I go into it, and we give it a second because we definitely do not have that many devices online right now. All right, so in this case, we're going to get, what's the peanut gallery laughing about right now? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. You're just reconnecting for a moment. Yeah. Reconnecting? Yeah, because I was starting to go into uh, into that place where you'd have to get me out of it. Okay, so look, I'm going to add an Ethernet dri IP driver, and we'll just leave it at this default. Now here, you need usually to select the network that you want to be on. I can leave it as Windows default because I only have one. And now if I go in, we're going to get the exact same thing. So Ethernet IP driver in RS Links is the exact same thing as the, whoops, where'd it go? There it goes as the broadcast discovery method. And then if we go in here and we have Ethernet devices, I'm going to add new event. And this is going to be the exact same thing as the list range. So in this case, I'll have to enter 192.168.1.9. Okay. And so that'll bring up that. So that's the same as the list range. Now, for the most part, if you can use the new factory talk links driver, you want to use the new factory talk links driver. There are some issues with RS links and newer revisions of Studio 5000. And I don't think they've worked them out. Maybe they have, but they want you to go, they want you to start using factory talk links anyway. And you're right, it looks a lot better. It's a little easier to config. This has solidified a bunch of information in my brain for me, so I'm sure it's going to be helpful to a lot of folks that have watched this today. Um, Hi from Trinidad. Absolutely. In the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. I know. I want to be there. How's the weather? Yeah. Like right now. Right this moment. Is right it, now. Like we're under total pollen attack right now mm -hmm. in Roanoke, Virginia. We live in a <laughs> and valley. And Mary Bruce so and I swirls. especially um, <laughs> have horrible allergies, and so... We're coming in every morning. Did you take your Zyrtec? <laughs> Amber's helping us. Have you heard like, like, Zyrtec? Have you heard your Zyrtec? Have, allergies. have you, you, have you Zyrtec. seen the windows out there? Keep those doors shut. <laughs> Hold your window up. It affects me differently, though. Like last night, I thought my skin was going to explode, or like my inner skin was going to explode. It'd be great if we could take our skin suits off on occasion. That's exactly how I felt. I felt like I was in a skin suit, and I was just like, I gotta rip it off. Pollen. 
So but, like uh, like uh, so some factories didn't anticipate. I mean, I'm sure they anticipated all having a connected network, but I know that no. a lot of them have the same IP uh, address for every single device in there. And I, I'm guilty of it. You know, I build ten machines identical, and they're not ever going to be networked. Mm. They all have the same IP address. Mary Bruce, what tra- what what is the IP address of a PLC on our trainers? 192, 168, 110. That's right. You buy 20 trainers from us, they all get the same IP address. <laughs> so when you're writing them on the drawings, and I can see what Josh is saying, if it's written on the drawings and it's the same IP address every time, I mean, the cool thing about IP addresses is that they can be changed. That's mm-hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, but the uncool thing about them is, yeah, if you don't update your drawings, then you have no idea. But, yeah, it's better than nothing. So, yeah, you're just looking for anything you can gather information on. We cannot get the written IP address off of that device. They've engraved it with some kind of mechanical pencil or laser etcher. I don't know. Lasers. But lasers. L- lasers. Like the lightsaber. Like There's the, lightsaber they in there. They took this and they went, what? <laughs> 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 good stuff. So today is Star Wars. Yeah, May the 4th. May ah. the 4th be with you. <laughs> <laughs> a record number of times yeah you know uh, and, uh, my daughter is definitely on to Rogue One right now how many oh, yeah. times have we watched Rogue One in the last month Rogue One and uh, Rise of Skywalker yeah, so it's like we start from the beginning and then go all the way to the end but yeah we it's quite a lot she's a which they have strong fan. female roles yep okay. you know? I think that's why she likes them so yeah. much yeah Rise of Skywalker was really really cool it was really, really, really Adam Gabber. Yep, really cool. Ben Solo. She actually, she said, um, a friend had texted her last night and he said, asked her what her favorite character was from that movie. And I was like, oh, it's Kylo Ren. And she goes, no, Mom, it's Ben Solo. <laughs> Duh. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so may the fourth be with you. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to this. Yeah. Yeah, well, what ah. else? <laughs> when you say may the force be with you, are you referring to logic forces in a PLC ladder program? Okay, no. no force zone. We, we, do, we do not use the F word <laughs> on a live stream. We, we never force anything. <laughs> I mean, and really, and that's something, you know, I stress to students in the class is, you know, outside of the classroom, what I'm getting ready to teach them, I have probably not used a force in well over a decade. I mean, and there that's not a good troubleshooting tool. Now, it is a tool that exists, so you need to know how it works, but mainly you need to know how dangerous it can be. And, yeah, that's probably for a different live stream. But, but I appreciate it's... the LOL so he, so you didn't have to feel so <laughs> too passionately about that. So thanks, D. Jacob. Let's see, Josh, when you have a cell that includes a PLC HMI and robotic control on its own local network, is it possible to har- possible or hard, or hard to change them over, over. Okay. well so here's the easy way to do this and this is definitely getting out of the realm of hey i'm just here to help you connect to your plc but you can use you know some type of router or to route that traffic onto the network and there are a lot of people that can tell you all about inner vlan routing and all that fun stuff but that's probably the easier way to do it is keep that cell on the network that it's on and then use some device to bridge the two networks across. Mm-hmm. Let's see. You have to use the F word when you have a 100 megawatt generator shut down in your bosses for you now. <laughs> well, maybe once, but yeah, the second time, yeah, we need to have a way to probably get that mega, 100 megawatt generator online with something a little safer than a force. What Wait, you got, Amber? Not be with you. I've got. Nothing. It makes me twitch every time I see a force left on an APLC. Well, Jeff, you know, that's there's very few, well, I don't know. Amber and Mary Bruce may disagree with me. There's very few things that I'm a real, really a jerk about. But force lights <laughs> is one of them. I only work on a piece of equipment if I walk up and there's a force on it. Because... It's true. <laughs> I mean, it was a good day at work. I mean, realistically, nope. that's <laughs> yeah. very dangerous, and people don't realize that. I mean, forces yeah. is a two-step process for a reason. you got to turn a force on, and then you have to enable it. And that's to give you that opportunity to, if you make a mistake, be able to back out without wrecking something. Mm-hmm. And I see it all the time. People are like, oh, I just leave forces enabled. This makes it really easy when I want to force something on really quick. 
okay that you're forcing way too much if you need that convenience mm. angel says hi from chile i love the way you teach things well thank you angel yeah That's he does all right <laughs> yeah amber amber thinks amber you know one of these days she's gonna take over because she's like you know you could do this better no. if you would just uh, nope that's that <laughs> f word again force nope <laughs> you're doing great well, doing well great. i mean you keep talking you know we need more classes i, I think one of you two need to come on as an instructor oh, okay. sounds great oh my god <laughs> let's you're force like, it it sounds great and then my, my brain was like no no <laughs> How about, you know, the dynamic duo of Amber and Mary Bruce teaching you PLC troubleshooting? I think that, yeah, I think that would go over better than pew, Tim. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> open? This has, it has a better ring to it. Normally open? Normally close. We're done. <laughs> oh, my God. Zero. How much did you pay for that? It's good stuff. Chile, man, that's incredible. Similar. I, I would love to go there. Wait. Would. Can we try to get food suggestions? We had we still I know. Got usually oh, yes. we somebody's usually got a food suggestion. I, know. I don't know what food goes with may the fourth be with you. Yeah. I don't know. The last one we were talking about bangers, bangers and mash. No, that yeah. was one steak, before last. Yeah, and then steak. We were talking about food trucks. Yeah. That's yeah. what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're usually hungry by this time. Anyway. Sounds good. Can't you see it in our eyes? <laughs> Can't you hear it in our voices? Can you hear the tears of hunger? <laughs> Isn't that a song? And we're going to make it one. <laughs> By the end of this day. Oh. Tim, what are some of your favorite Ethernet uh, connection issues to resolve? Um, Probably, the. I mean, probably trying to figure out what that IP address is, is one. But probably replacing devices. You know, is probably the more difficult. Like, let's say you have a Flex IO module. We you know we have to sign an IP address. I mean, there's where, if you don't have an IP with you, it's it is really trudging through. Somebody commented um, on a video the other day. They're like, "How can I set the IP address of something without your device?" It's like much more difficult. <laughs> it's like it's not even worth me going through. You can Google it and find it yourself. But yeah. Probably a sign and I, he addresses the stuff when you're replacing it. Yeah, yeah. I, I got pretty, I feel pretty fortunate that when I started to learn this, that device was here because I don't, it would be a lot more difficult. That's the funny thing. I had a class, it's been a few classes ago, someone brought one in. <laughs> and on Wednesday, they're like using it. I'm like, you can't use that. And they're like, why not? It's like, no, that's that's not the point of this class is you got to suffer through the tough way. <laughs> that's hysterical. I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, class four last night, yeah, somebody, or I can't remember, two or three classes. Um, I, came, I, I went to the bathroom. I came back and somebody was watching one of my YouTube videos trying to figure out how to do something. I'm like, no. <laughs> It's like, no, no, you've got to look at this. So you've got to figure this out. you got to do this the hard way. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, realistically, that's all I had for this live stream. It was going to be a short stream of just how can we connect. Now, one thing I will say about this is if you're getting the, you know, if you're thinking, well, I've never had this problem, it's probably more important that you go through this exercise. So go ahead and change your IP address to something that's not right and see how the ping function works. Change it to a duplicate IP on a network that's safe. Do not do this on your plant floor. So you can see what it does and see, you know, how you can navigate out of it. Because it's always going to be when you're in, in pressure and you're trying to get a machine running that all this stuff's going to happen. Let's see. What's that, what's that say, Amber? So I'm reading D. Jacobs. What did Angel? I can't. See. Angel said that they recently uh, tried to do the micro 800 and CCW is too slow to make an online change. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Angel, what version of CCW we're using? Because there is a significant performance improvement in CCW version um, uh, 12 to 13. So let me see if I can even find that really quick. Amber, take it away while I look for this. Great session, guys. May the growth, success, and well-being force really be with you. Even though I have been in PLC world since Alan Bradley, Bradley Heather, Heather Bulletin, oh, 1774 PLC. Oh, old school 1978. there. 1978. And seen every generation since. I still learn so much from your channel. Let me mix the platform a bit. 
live long and prosper. Absolutely. Thank you for mixing the platform. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> she says I use 12. Yep, Angel, so I just sent you a link to one where I talk about improvements that are in version 13. And that doesn't, I don't know what they did, but that the biggest difference between, or version 13, the biggest thing that I see is they did a lot of performance improvements in connecting components. And also they did a little bit more to make it look like um, Studio 5000 when you have the Logix theme. I wish they would do a little more. They're not quite there yet. I don't know how far they're willing to go. And is it the 12, the online version that you can't do online changes with? Well, that's if you have the free or the developer version. Okay. And so Angel, I'm assuming, has the developer version. And yeah, in that case, you know, they, um, yeah, that the free version, you can't do any online changes. 